welcome back to Royalty Soaps. Sister has you covered with a pumpkin soap. <laughs> I know a lot of people were like, is she even going to do one this year? Yes. Here I am. I actually had Instagram decide what the name of this soap was going to be. It has my favorite pumpkin fragrance blend of all time. It's so delicious. It's like my best seller for fall every single year. It's just mwah, chef's kiss. Anyway, let's make some soap. <laughs> I am legit so excited. <laughs> this is gonna be such a fun one. All right guys, first step pouring our lye water solution into our oils. Our oil blend is all melted down. Everything is sitting at about 77 degrees Fahrenheit today. Now I'm going to blend this on high until just past emulsion. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is pour off one layer, just, just one. It's going to be a brown thin line. And then I'm going to add my fragrance oil blend. This is a secret sauce fragrance oil blend. It smells like pumpkin bread and coffee and nutmeg and cinnamon and whipped cream and just, ugh everything fall and delicious. I'm then going to add some mocha brown mica and some dark brown oxide. Let's blend that on up. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe down my stick blender because I am going to be using this for lighter colors as we go on. This layer is sort of supposed to represent like coffee. It's kind of our anchoring layer, if you will. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my workshop heritage mold and we will pour this first layer. All right, let's get our brown soap in. There's a lot of fall and winter blends that thicken your batter, but it always works to your advantage if you kind of wanted a thicker soap anyway. And y'all know I do, that's just the way I like it. So let me tap that down. And now we're going to work with the rest of the soap. So I'm gonna reuse my little uh, soap dish here, cause you know, if I can avoid, <laughs> doing more dishes. I'm absolutely going to do it. But before I pour anything out, I'm going to add some coffee grounds into my main batter so that it's in all of the accent colors. And to avoid getting this soap uh, too blendy, <laughs> as it were. I'm going to put this in with the spatula instead of the stick blender. I'm already going to have to blend in the color and the fragrance oil, so I might as well not accelerate it more than I have to. Okie dokie, let's talk colors. It's Aztec Gold from TKB Trading and it's Goldfinger from Mad Micah's. Then I have some Poppycock. This is also from Mad Micah's. It is a copper color. And then I have 24 karat gold. That is from TKB and some titanium dioxide. That is also from TKB or Wholesale Supplies Plus, whichever one you're purchasing from. They both have water soluble TD and I like both of them. Okay, so let's go ahead and blend up all of these. Right, let's get some colors in. I'm going to pour the poppycock soap in on one side, all the way down. I am gonna pour all of that in. I'm not leaving any to put on the top. And then we're gonna do the same for the gold finger. Kinda pour it all in, in two passes. Oh, it smells so good. Like, this is, this is gonna be my bar. <laughs> This is really heavy, <laughs> so I'm holding a spatula. I'm gonna let probably half of it come out and then I will try to pour the rest. Okay, so that's about, that's about half. Okay, and since that's in, I'm gonna start by pouring relatively gently. I'm just hoping that I'm not messing up that layer that I made. I think it's heavy enough that it shouldn't be a problem. Ah! 
Now I have to get the, oh, this is such a weird pour. I was confident and now I'm not. <laughs> Whew. All right, much better. <laughs> now we're gonna scrapey scrapey our big containy. Super big, the biggest containy. All righty. Now I'm going to take some of that poppycock mica that I have mixed with the oil blend and I'm gonna put that right on top. In fact, I started that way, but I actually think it'll be more helpful to go this way. Get like two full lines per loaf like this, like that maybe? Any extra I have just dripping everywhere. And then I can go in and swirl it like this. Excellent. Ugh, that smell, it's so good. I, I would stop commenting about it if it wasn't so darned delicious. Okay, so. Let's put this on. And the first thing I'm going to add are some little pumpkins. I'm going to put one little pumpkin per bar. And um, I'm going to start by just doing the first ones closest to me so that I don't throw them around where they don't go. I'm trying to put them sort of close to the middle of the bar, but not dead middle because I do have some coffee beans I have to add to the top as well. Okay, let's turn it to the side. Do you guys have anything you're looking forward to this lovely October? I know I am. I'm supposed to do Lily's birthday party because we did not have time for one in September. I mean, honestly, she's probably forgotten all about it, but it's still important to me. I have a couple more teeny tiny little gifts that I wanna give her. And then my best friend was gonna try to throw me a party as well because I was supposed to have one near my birthday, but I wasn't feeling good and it just, <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> so we really have two parties we're supposed to be doing in October, but I don't know if we're gonna have time for both of them. So Caroline comes over a couple times a month to do work stuff. She lives about an hour and a half away from me. And so we really just need that time together so that we can get stuff accomplished, stuff that can only be done in person. So she'll drive out to me and she'll stay in the holiday house, guest house, and then she'll go back after we've worked for like a day or so. So it feels like she and I are getting to be together all the time, but I'm really always looking forward to us doing a party or something because while, well, you know, work is work and it's fun work at that, like I never do it begrudgingly. It's not the same as just doing a leisurely activity for nothing but leisure. <laughs> so she's also moving this month and uh, I have a couple of things that Caleb and I have to do with our property. For those of y'all who are in an apartment um, or a rent house, which Caleb and I have done both of those things, there's just such a different set of to-do list items. <laughs> There's still a lot to do for both of those things. You have to make sure that things like fences are mended and that you get your grass mowed in a timely manner because if you don't, it will be so much more difficult <laughs> to mow. So the acreage close to my house, my little brother Elisha actually mows for us every week. He comes over and we pay him. I'm a huge advocate for always paying family members. I talked about this many, many years ago when I first started doing soap and it started to get overwhelming with like what I had to do every month. Sometimes I would hire my sisters or my friends to come in and I always tried to compensate them in some way financially, even if it was just three or four dollars an hour plus pizza, that's just really important because they were helping me pursue my dream. They were helping me out in a pinch. So I, I don't know, that's just always something I've advocated for. It's something that I talked about. I spoke at a seminar one time and that was something I mentioned about like owning a shop and things that I value, things that I do, obviously I still, <laughs> pay everyone that's working with me now and much better <laughs> than I did back in the early days. But even then, it was important for me to give back to them because they were helping me. All right, now let's put a few little coffee beans on top. Oh yes, oh yes. 
This is such, this is such a mood. Hmm, maybe I'll think of some more small business tips. Let's see. Another thing that I found, soap planers and bevelers for us and our company, not worth the expense, not worth the time. They do not work as well for us and you just can't beat the potato peeler. The potato peeler for us is almost twice as fast. It gets great results and they're like two bucks to buy. And yes, for all of our soaps, we still bevel all of them. So they all have a very clean edge when packaging. Another tip, don't make products you don't like. <laughs> Now this is just, this is of course, all these tips that I'm giving you are just one person's experience, but I didn't like making certain products. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I just remember not liking them and just, the selling of it didn't feel authentic because I didn't really like them. Then I only started selling things I actually really loved and that was a lot better. Some of that was just trial and error. I didn't know I wouldn't like those products, but I didn't. <laughs> so it made it harder to sell them because I was less enthusiastic about them. Same thing goes for smells. If you don't like certain fragrances, don't carry them just because they're popular. It brings down morale if you're having to smell things you think are gross every day or market them like making a label for a smell you don't like is just never a fun job it makes all the jobs concerning that item less fun it brings you down you don't have time for that speaking of time don't forget to work into your product cost all of the time this is why I don't want the crafters to come for me but in my professional experience with my business craft fairs and markets were never Never worth it. Never worth it for me in my area. I never sold nearly enough product for as much as my product was worth and for however many hours I had to spend out there and the booth setup. The booth setup and all of that costs money. All of those things cost so much money. It was never worth it. Maybe if I had done something that was like a juried show and it was really big, that might have been more worth it. But for someone just starting out, they don't have the capital most of the time to buy all of the things that are required for big shows like that. Those like enormous international trade shows. I I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about booth fees of 150 bucks like local craft fairs, and then you only sell $20 worth of soap, and it's like a huge net loss. I see stories about that most of the time. Listen, online e-commerce is so enormous, and it has so much potential. I definitely recommend building up an online platform because it is so limitless. It is a worldwide customer base, not just who happens to show up on this one Saturday at this one market. So there you go, there's like three or four pieces of business advice. Now for the final touch, we must add just a small smattering of, why can't I remember the name of this? Uh, uh <laughs> coffee beans? Crushed coffee? <laughs> why does it, coffee grounds, there it is. <laughs> I, I promise I'm fine, <laughs> I'm fine. Mm. Next time I think I'll put the beans on first and then put the pumpkins on last. <laughs> now, if you enjoy hearing small business tips like that, let me know because I can talk more about that stuff. I definitely want to build up other soap makers, other small business people, as I've said a million times. I don't look at anybody as my competition, only my community. It's truly the way I feel about it. So any tidbits I can pass along to kind of help you guys out, I'm happy to do it if that's something you're interested in. If you'd rather just me talk about, you know, fun things I'm doing in my life, that's cool too. I just want to do what you guys want to hear. And I'm going to spritz the top of this with rubbing alcohol, make that mica line shiny. Woohoo! And we are done with, by the way, Instagram named this soap, Sweet Pumpkin Spice Soap. Ta-da! This is what it looks like up close. Looks so edible. Looks so delicious. And I can tell you, again, favorite scent of the month. I will be using this in my bathroom in October. We'll be back in 18 to 24 hours to cut up these bars, split up the slabs, take a look at the inside after this quick commercial break. Let me open.
open up my soap cutter here. Ugh, guys, the scent. It smells so good even the next day. Like I, I never remember how strong it's going to be. I have to wait, you know, like a whole year <laughs> before I use it again. And then every time I'm like, oh, it's the best. It's so strong after it sits and saponifies. So let's go ahead and cut this. And this is what a bar looks like on the inside. Now, it's not gonna look exactly like this after the cure. It is going to darken up a little bit because it is a pumpkin fragrance, but still, it looks amazing. Also, with a couple of these, I do expect there will probably be some drag marks because coffee is exfoliating and it's bigger pieces, but this is super, super finely ground coffee, so it probably won't be as noticeable as even like a green tea would be. The smell, I'm deceased. This one looks so perfect. Ugh. All right, guys, question of the day. What's your favorite pumpkin treat to make in the fall, assuming you like pumpkin? Every time I ask questions like this, there's always people in the comments who are like, but I don't like pumpkin, so I can't answer the whole question. Okay, well. If you don't like pumpkin, what about apples? Apple pie, apple pudding, apple ice cream. Let's cut another one, that was fun. Look at them. Look at them swirly swirls. All right, now that I've cut this last portion here, I'm ready to go. Big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I feel so official sitting here at my, <laughs> my soap making table desk. I just wanted to change it up a little bit, you know what I mean? Now y'all know I am big pals with Skillshare. I really love them. They are an amazing company and they have really, really supported me throughout the years, even when I was a much smaller channel. So I really appreciate that. And if you've been hiding under a rock, which that's fine, I, I you know, no, absolutely no discrimination against people who live under rocks. Just allow me to fill you in. So Skillshare is an online learning community where people who want to explore and grow their creative journey all come together and learn together in a fun format. So there are a whole bunch of classes on literally everything you could possibly want to know. Longtime fans of royalty soaps know that Skillshare is basically responsible for anything I know about Photoshop or Lightroom. I found those absolutely Absolutely invaluable classes to take. They really helped me step up my photography game and my editing game so that all of my soap pictures, every time we launch a new collection, look superb. And I am not a professional photographer, so I really appreciate all the help I can get. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Once again, that is the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down in the description box. We'll get a month of Skillshare for free. Test it out, see if you like it. I know you will. I've already had so many of you guys tell me that it's been helpful, especially those of you who are running handcrafted um, cottage-based small businesses. They really, really tailor the experience to be so good for us creative types. You're gonna love it. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. You guys be sure to check out that link down in the description box below. Go snag yourself a month of Skillshare for free. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give this video a, a thumbs up and um, subscribe and all of that good stuff. Also, if you wanna set an alarm for the release date, listen, I'll shoot you straight. Fall and winter soaps are my fastest sellers. Like spring and summer, you, you probably have a good chance you're gonna get it. And also we haven't been selling out the shop. Thank goodness we've had soap actually available all month in the shop, but if it was ever going to go quickly, <laughs> Typically, the November release and the December release are like, that's where we sell the most because the holidays are coming. So I highly would recommend setting an alarm for this release if you are keen to get any of these bars. And if you're just over here for the show, I'm flattered I can entertain you. <laughs>
Be sure you do something fun for yourself today, like, you know, go get in a pumpkin spice latte. I'm so glad we've gotten to the point in society where people don't really make fun of other people for just drinking a drink. Get yourself a scone or a scone, however you prefer to say it. Get yourself a little drink, do something nice for yourself today. Take a breather, and I'll see you guys in the next video. So until then, bye for now. Meow.